Inestec and Ingenieria Radio present Inestec Science Pit, a monthly signature dedicated to decode science and technology trends. Inestec Science Bits, decoding science bit by bit. Hello and welcome to Inesc Tech Science Bits, a podcast that is a partnership between Inesc Tech and Engenharia Radio. Here we shed a light on the latest trends in science and technology, trying to dive deeper in each subject with the help of Inesc Tech experts and researchers. Today we are focusing on business analytics, namely prescriptive analytics, a research line that has the potential to be game-changing for management and industry, but that is also a bit controversial. To talk about prescriptive analytics, we welcome today two researchers from Inesc Tech Center for Industrial Engineering and Management, Bernardo Almada Lobo and Gonzalo Figueira. Thank you both for being here. Bernardo, I would start to ask you, what is exactly business analytics? Anna, let me start by thanking you for the nice invitation. In broad terms, business analytics is a set of analytical methodologies uh, that enable the creation of business value. It, it is clearly data-driven and should drive business action. Even though the ultimate purpose is to make better decisions and what we want is to empower decision-making, the research and development that we conduct on analytical methods has different objectives and uh, are employed in different settings. We can do it to get better information and build on top of large sets of data to obtain a clear picture of the past and present. We also can do it to get better predictions, for instance, to obtain careful predictions of outcomes and estimates of risk, and somehow to point toward managerial problems. And finally, we also can do it to get better decisions based on mathematical optimization models, algorithms, to somehow support complex decisions for improving performance in uh, multiple domains across different industries. Okay, but if a company or organization wants to apply analytics, where should it start, Gonzalo? Okay, thank you also for this invitation. Uh, where should the company start, right? I think it will depend on a lot of things. It will, of course, depend on the type of company, the maturity of the processes that it has in place, and especially the maturity of, of the data. Data is actually one of the most critical points, if not the most, when we are applying analytics. We could say it's the raw material of the analytics machine. No data, no analysis we can do on top. But having data is not enough, because we need to have good quality data, data in which we can rely. Otherwise, the results will be of little use or no use at all. There is this well-known expression, that is the GIGO rule, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. We cannot expect the output to be more reliable than the data that was used to feed it. Okay, but this to say that the first step is to have good quality data. Then you can start applying analytics. And the type of analytics will depend basically on the main issues and challenges the company wants to address. So, for instance, if a manager wants to understand what's happening in his plants or in his production line or even in a given machine, we should apply descriptive analytics. Predictive analytics will be useful to understand what might happen or what is likely to happen. For instance, how much we expect to produce and sell or when a machine could break down. And finally, prescriptive analytics will really prescribe solutions, such as how to produce or when to perform maintenance. Right, but is there a sequence in which these different types of analytics should be conducted? I mean, should we start with descriptive analytics and end with prescriptive analytics, Gonzalo? That's exactly right. We, uh, that would be the natural path. First, explore the data and understand the problems, the challenges, the issues, and only then try to predict and prescribe solutions. Only when we have a good understanding of the current situation, we can try to predict what will happen and then what we should do. Somehow prescriptive analytics takes advantage of the results of predictive analytics, which in turn uses the output of descriptive analytics. But there's another reason 
why we should start with descriptive analytics. It's because applying prescriptive analytics in practice is much more challenging. The ambition is much higher. Uh, because it is suggesting complete solutions to the problem, not just insights or foresights about the system, which the decision maker could use to derive solutions. No, here we are really going until the end of the process by prescribing the solutions. But does it always happen in this sequence? I mean, first descriptive, then predictive and prescriptive? Uh, no, sometimes we go with prescriptive analytics right away. Uh, because the previous layers, the descriptive and predictive uh, parts, are already at a good level, or they are simply straightforward and they don't require these sophisticated analytical methods. Then we usually discover it's not exactly like that and we need to strengthen the descriptive or predictive components. So I would say that in most cases applying prescriptive analytics is definitely more ambitious in every way. Uh, okay, and... Um Business analytics is uh, an end-to-end -end process that involves several steps. Can we say that the analytics part is just one of the steps, Bernardo? Indeed. Uh, actually, the business analytics project is, is, is a journey uh, with several building blocks. Um, the first thing we should try to understand, what is the business problem and whether this problem is ready for an analytic solution? In other words, so we should somehow frame the business problem. Then we need somehow to translate the what of the business problem into the how of the analytics problem. We are here actually somehow trying to reformulate the problem statement as an analytics problem. The data block is fundamental, as Gonzalo mentioned before. So everything related to data needs and sources Uh, the procedures to define uh, the acquisition, cleaning, the structure, and the way we summarize the data, um, and also the way we perform some initial data, data analysis. Then comes the block related to um, the ability of selecting the approach to solve the business problem. It's, it should be emphasized that the ideal method highly depends on the type and characteristics of the problem. A wise choice requires solid analytical expertise and, and is critical for success. There is always a trade-off to make between what we want to achieve. Is it accuracy, simplicity, speed, scalability of our approach, flexibility? Let me give an example. How should we somehow select a prescriptive method to conduct R&D activities? Does the business problem have a massive number of variables? Is it highly combinatorial problem? Does it face both scale and complexity issues? Is, for instance, uncertainty a key factor? How hard is it to, to reach a feasible solution? Then we need to perform the analytical testing, where we usually conduct sensitivity analysis and we perform business validation. And of course, after that part, if we are successful, we need to deploy, deploy the model, the approach, and help solving the business problem. The end, at the end, uh, it is mandatory that we manage the model life cycle to evaluate the business benefit of the overall approach over time. Can you provide some application examples of prescriptive analytics in business or in industry? Yeah, thank God optimization problems appear everywhere. They arise in a wide variety of applications in many different forms. We are actually interested in real-world problems that are difficult to solve. In those problems, the, um, the number of possible solutions in the search space is so large uh, that forbids us to, to, to employ an exhaustive search for the best answer. This is what we call combinatorial optimization problems. At Ineshktech, we have been solving managerial problems in various domains, uh, such as manufacturing, health, um, retail, mobility, with a special focus on operations management. Some of them are more of a strategic nature, such as what we do with network design, how to locate facilities, not how, where to locate facilities, 
plants, warehouses, or some of the challenges might be of tactical nature, such as operations planning, everything that we do related to workforce planning, capacity planning, distribution planning, inventory management, uh, maintenance policies for asset management, and other challenges are more of operational nature, such as production lot sizing and scheduling, uh, vehicle routing, um, and those type of, of problems. Okay, but is there any common ground between these problems? And uh, it's interesting that you ask that, that question. Um, all those problems, they are either sizing the resources or planning the resources or scheduling the resources. And these three different tasks, we try to do it efficiently. And the resources, they might be financial, product-related, machine, equipment-related, or they might, they might actually be human resources type. They also show all those problems. If we deep dive on, on the challenges, they also show very intricate objective functions and in a lot of situations, exotic constraints. And in order to address them, you really need to have somehow a holistic perspective of the whole problem. You should try to cover the multiple processes that are touched by them, the multiple stakeholders, the different uh, key performance indicators. And at the end, if you really want to promote the adoption of analytics uh, processes to solve them, you really need to have strong cultural change. So, uh, concerning uh, prescriptive analytics, we are talking about a set of mathematical models that ultimately can help the managers and CEOs in decision-making, right? Let me just clarify that optimization is not only about mathematical models. It is true that one of the approaches is, is indeed mathematical programming, where we do describe the problem through a set of complex mathematical equations. Then the, the, this model is solved by dedicated solvers. This method is, is actually very flexible in general, may prove optimality, but the computing times are usually quite long for uh, real-world instances. Then we have a second approach that is based on heuristics that they describe the problem through an algorithm. It's, it's essentially a program that produces solutions very quickly, but we cannot guarantee optimality. So coming to your second point, analytics will definitely create value on guiding tactical and also strategical managerial decisions. Such decisions taken by managers, C-level people, have been based too much on empirical approaches. With more access to useful data, companies are increasingly using more sophisticated analytical methods. However, we still observe a low adoption of advanced analytics especially prescriptive analytics, the main theme of this talk today. There is a significant difference between an identification of patterns and an actionable insight. But why that low adoption of those analytical methods? One reason for a low percentage of adherence is a considerable number of unsuccessful prescriptive analytics projects. The necessary change of the company's mindset regarding the use of optimization models and also business decision support systems requires more than just the, 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 the appropriate technology, people, and processes. Actually, to be successful, you really need to have the buy-in of all the stakeholders involved from top level to top, top level management so in this case, their commitment and in, in enthusiasm should be visible to data owners, for instance, employees affected by the change and users of the new solutions and analytical processes. In a lot of situations, managers 
they are reluctant to apply recommendations from the system, the model, um, especially because they cannot somehow understand the underlying reasoning. And, and this trust issue comes from models where they are being typically used as black boxes. And, and in this situation, it is really difficult or virtually impossible to interpret and predict uh, somehow the behavior of these boxes. If the box is transparent, if the humans not only validate the solutions, but are also actively and explicitly involved and contributing with solutions themselves, they are somehow involved in guiding the learning process with their domain knowledge. This is a kind of somehow collaborative optimization. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that if we can create explainable models, there is a much larger chance of the adoption of analytics by, by managers. So managers cannot hide behind a technology. They have to be in control. They must interiorize that the system will help them making decisions faster, more agile, rather than just assuming that the system will make better decisions for them. I do believe that it is not realistic to assume that the human intuition and the expertise factor can be eliminated. For instance, to say the machine algorithm arrived at this solution is, in my view, to abdicate uh, the analytics responsibility. Right. And um, what about the methods? What tools are typically used by, for prescriptive analytics, Gonzalo? Okay, there is a wide range of methods. Um, but the core is really optimization methods, as Bernardo was saying, which includes a variety of different uh, paradigms. Uh, mathematical programming is one of them, but we have also constraint programming, heuristics and meta-heuristics. And then we have also other techniques like multi-criteria decision-making methods and so on. But we can also have hybridizations. And the hybridizations can be between two optimization methods, like meta heuristics and mathematical programming, the so-called math, math heuristics, which have a number of advantages. The main, I would say, is that we can use the heuristic component only in the most difficult uh, part of the, of, of, uh, of the problem, the most combinatorial part, and then use mathematical programming for the rest of it. Or we can also combine optimization with other methods. For instance, combining optimization with simulation is one of the most interesting approaches, in my opinion. Because pure optimization methods, such, such as mathematical programming, they can incorporate some detail of the problem, but not too much detail, because they become too complex very quickly. Simulation, on the other hand, allow us to go, to go much further in the things we can model. So combining the two can be really powerful then of course it might become very time consuming because we will be running a lot of simulations. But the secret there, I would say, is to carefully design the integration of simulation with optimization. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that and there is not a one size fits all solution. So I would say the best way will depend on the specific problem we need to solve. Okay, um, let's try to look forward. Can you predict which should be the future developments in prescriptive analytics? Okay, uh, first let me start by saying that making these kind of predictions is always a difficult exercise, but I can try to point some possible directions. Um, there is a vast number of ways in this field moving forward, so I will certainly not be exhaustive. But one is what I just mentioned, investigating the combination of simulation and optimization. So this has been explored for, for quite some time now, especially in the last two decades. But there are a lot of research avenues because there is a huge number of possible combinations. And each of these combinations can be studied and improved. Um, talking specifically about optimization, um, I would say that in the last three decades we have witnessed a substantial amount of work on approximate optimization methods, so the so-called heuristics and meta-heuristics. Because problems got more complex, so we needed to give up on optimal solutions in some cases. Uh, however, the methods are also being combined with exact optimization methods to accelerate the time we take to get optimal solutions. 
Uh, developments on mathematical programming uh, based heuristics will continue as the scientific community is always interested in solving problems until optimality or at least in knowing how far we are from the optimal um, and doing this in reasonable computing times. Are these future uh, developments connected with the challenges of Industry 4.0? Yes. yes. I would say that in the context of Industry 4.0, problems are getting even more complex than before so much that systems need to be decomposed in subsystems and decisions need to be decentralized. For instance, to produce highly customized products, factories are becoming more flexible and decentralized. In this new industrial revolution, in this new industry 4.0, a machine is becoming more autonomous and able to decide in real time what to produce and how to do it. Uh, but we have other examples, for instance, order fulfillment of large online retailers is another example. Uh, these activities are being automated and the decisions are made in real time. Whenever an order arrives at, at, at one of these retailers, we need to decide from which warehouse we will ship the products or how the robots will perform order picking in uh, some automated warehouse. Uh, so for these real time decisions, solving a mathematical model or even running a meta heuristic is not a viable option because that would require at least some minutes, which we don't have. We need simple decision rules that can be executed instantly. And the challenge there is to make them also effective because we have many uh, existing rules which are simple, but they are not effective. And here machine learning is a, a, an interesting tool uh, because we could make the process of learning new rules automatically. Rules which will be a little more complex, but also more effective. Uh, so far, we have seen machine learning used mainly for descriptive and predictive analytics. But now that companies are consolidating these processes, I would say that prescriptive analytics would become a central topic in machine learning, uh, which could also be cross-fertilized with optimization techniques. Right. Um, well, with these uh, prospects on business analytics, we end this podcast. Thank you, and we will meet again for another insightful conversation about science and technology. Thank you very much. Inestec and Ingenieria Radio present Inestec Science Bit, a monthly signature dedicated to decode science and technology trends. In Aztec Science Bits, decoding science bit by bit.